Uh, Louise Clarsten uh, from Color House, uh, your uh, trend analyst, trend forecaster, and um, we are so lucky that we have the possibility to sneak a sneak peek in your gorgeous uh, uh, forecast books. And we start now with um, autumn 2010. Yeah. So please um, let us know what is the best, hottest, nicest uh, trends for this period. Well, uh, I would say there are some parallel uh, tracks here. We have the track of, of going forward. We have finally a new decade, yes. Uh, and we're leaving the old one behind. That was, a, I don't know, a very uh, strange one, I think. Insecure and everything. And now we're moving forward in a more open and global way. We're very aware of what's happening in the world and we want to make a good world. I think there's a lot of good thoughts around. Um, but we are a bit weak in knowing where we're going. So, uh, and also considering that people have, for a long time, uh, during these past 10 years, I guess, got rid of all the memories. They have really nothing left. We don't have uh, our photos developed, so they are stuck in a memory stick somewhere. We took away all our memory cards, our old paintings, granny's old porcelain. It's all tucked away, sold on eBay. We are, we're gone, lost, and we, we have quite unpersonal homes. So I think we need to move forward into something more personalized. And we want to remember the past. It can be Granny's rock chair that you actually remake in a new color to create a, a, a track to your own family memory. But it can also be how many designers, and now we're looking into 2020 from Holland. It's a trend agency we cooperate with where they talk about the importance of, of memory in products, but in a modern way. So you bring in, for instance, porcelain. Of course, soon Europe will know that we will have not one, but actually two, I understand, royal weddings in Sweden this yes. year. So big thing for all the press. Uh, and also for our behaviors, there will be big focus on how we um, make our tables, how we, you know, how you have the etiquette to perform and what does your porcelain look like. So a lot of focus on porcelain actually since years. Many big designers have designed a porcelain collection, even fashion designers. So do go in and look into those old fashioned porcelain stores and you'll, you'll notice there is something new coming up. So you will find tracks of memories in the new collections, like a little stamp or something, but it's misplaced or a little bit out of proportion or modern in its interpretation. Is it more or less all Europe you think that will go for this trend or all the world or how or Scandinavia or how? Porcelain is big everywhere I think. Uh, now I think this track is rather old world so I would say Europe yeah. and America uh, to a certain extent on the uh, east coast and, and in California I guess where the whole porcelain idea uh, also the way we don't want to waste things we want to reuse and we want to have things that last and, and all that but to create new memories so that's important also to, to, to link the modern and the technical with the soft and the comfortable materials so we, we make, make it a very human way even if it can be quite austere even if you have that style um, in a shop or in, in your home even but the little memories makes us happy and makes us dream and talking about dreaming, this is an example from uh, some hotels in the world who have chosen to keep their memories. They keep a wall in the room if they're lucky to find all the old pieces of wallpaper where you can see, ah, oh, that was the green, that was that. They're fainted in color, they're very pale, so it's like a non-color message in print and pattern. But wow, what a nice So they just thought. tear down bits and pieces mm -hmm. and yeah. then... and reveal the wall behind. It's great, like, great. You know, so, so we are a bit bored with this very flat and perfect and glossy and everything is like perfect, perfect. And we're getting a bit bored with the perfect, perfect mm -hmm. because it, it, we all look the same and the homes look the same and the product looks the same. Mm -hmm. So, but it can be a quite neutral color card. It doesn't have to be, wow, well, then I need a lot of color. It can, but you can also work on the neutrals, but make them alive. You know, work both warm neutrals, warm browns, beige colors and the grays. And of course you need the red, because the red is going to be the new, almost like um, s statement color for all kind of styles. Even the most minimalistic home, you will bring in red, because it's a safe color. It's the first one we choose if we 
from the primary colors. So red is strong. Uh, continuing really a little bit the same story here, but in a very homey way, more comfy chairs. We don't want to sit straight and feel like in school. We want to cuddle up, put off with the shoes, feet under your, your body and feel homey. So that kind of cuddling and taking care of, and then we bring in more brights, even if it's in solids or in uh, one piece object, depending on how brave you are. You could, you could go on here and do more, I guess. So the handmade effects, memories of hand crochet, could be printed digitally, brought up on a wall. It depends on what you this want to do. This takes a lot of time to do, so. <laughs> yeah, well, we're, we're we're good people nowadays. We do things fast also. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe we want to do it slow. Maybe we want to have actually embroidery. Hand knitting is big. Mm -hmm. Embroidery is big. All the old uh, craftsmanships uh, are growing like mad. Mm -hmm. Also growing groceries, you know, in your backyard or in your window in the, in the kitchen. Growing like mad. So we are very interested in the old behaviors and but to at least have one thing you know how to do, you know, a knit a jumper. I haven't done for 20 years. I feel I want to, you know, come back to how did I do that? Mm, it's nice, comfy. Talking about comfy, the black and white story develops with the light wood, melange textiles and the red accents. Compact, clear, quite forward, depending on who you are, but so it's the, very the, playful. And the old birch is uh, coming back. Like light wood is coming back, yeah. definitely, mm -hmm. because it goes so well with the black and white, only if you see it like this. Mm -hmm. It's nice, it doesn't, it's not bringing really colour in, it's just bringing some homey mm -hmm. feeling. Mm -hmm. But we want to keep it very light. Oh, so, also floors, do you think? Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. Uh, it's lovely kitchens. to paint them. Yes, yeah. you've seen already kitchens coming up with a straight, very, you know, almost like raw concept. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I, th I think that's a wanting to come back to, you know, how wood smells mm. when you cut it. It's like that newness. You want to have that fresh and newness. I wanted to talk about the green because the green is also becoming a very strong story. We've seen green coming through in details, like cushions. How many million cushions were sold in Sweden in different greens? I don't know. Lime greens, dark greens. But we need to move on a little bit and bring it up in bigger pieces. Maybe the khaki color back on a sofa again to bring in an organic feeling, uh, not to mix up with ecological issues, because that's another choice. You can add them if you like, and it's very logical to do, and I, I recommend you to do it. But I also think that you can work with greens no matter if you keep that track or not. Uh, the green story is um, just uh, celebrating life. It's celebrating something that's organic, very safe. You can live with it for many years and, and feel happy about it. So, and that's logical also to see the yellows, little punchy, uh, brighter, light yellow, a lemon feeling, or the more honey, warmer yellows. We'll see a lot of yellows filtering through. Mm. Um, a little bit like the red. If you don't, you dare one color more than the yellow, the red, you'll be the yellow, I think. Yeah. Uh, and moving from the organic, I would also lastly like to show how we see going forward. Think of the minimalistic home, lounge, clean, white, grey, maybe a black accent or black cupboard at the top. You need to add surface, you need to have interesting prints or ways of showing imagery. It can be quite um, light driven as well, if you like that, if that's possible. There are so many new techniques in all kinds of materials. But we want to develop the very plain, because we are, as I said, bored with the just white and white uh, when it comes to modern. So we really like the idea of bringing in maybe shine towards metallic, maybe a little bit of shimmer towards something that's in concrete. Or is it concrete? You need to go there and touch. And we are very interested in the fingers touch. We want to have surfaces that gives us, brings us to memories and or wonders, or oh, that's that's cool, or oh, that's scary, you know, so that we move us. And then you get a melange idea, even if it's still in a very neutral um, environment, if you are that type of consumer, you'll notice that with the shimmer, with the extra effects, it's not neutral at all. It's very cool and interesting. Mm -hmm. So uh, work on the materials is my advice if you are a product developer. That's important.